Seems to me that a lot of folks really struggle getting PC gaming HDR to work in a living room television type of environment or even maybe with a desktop monitor as well. But I use my RTX 4090 gaming PC as my main gaming platform of choice. I game exclusively in a living room slash home theater style environment with controllers and into what I have behind me here, an 83 inch LG G2 television. And I have pretty much always found the experience, thankfully, uh, to be exceptional. I found Windows HDR, PC gaming HDR to work really, really well for me, very reliable. Everything tends to look really good to me too in games. It was awesome when Microsoft saw fit to add the auto HDR capabilities into Windows and I was taking advantage of that for a while. But in, in the last little bit, NVIDIA has kind of leapfrogged them uh, a, good, a good bit. And I haven't followed up my last video about HDR for PC gaming in a living room and how I have things set up, but I've changed some stuff. And I wanna go over all the settings, all the options, with this particular focus on the fact that I'm no longer using auto HDR in Windows. That stuff is disabled. We have a new option, a new better capability to take advantage of, and that's NVIDIA launching their latest NVIDIA app. Uh, this app is meant to be the replacement in the long term, essentially, for the GeForce Now experience and hopefully the NVIDIA, the old, old <laughs> NVIDIA uh, control panel applet. Bring it all into one. But with that, they added RTX HDR. And so far, everything that I've tried to play on my gaming, C on my gaming PC using RTX HDR is just absolutely fantastic. It blows, the <laughs> it blows Windows Auto HDR out of the water. It works essentially... Built into the GPU means it works with every game. I think the fidelity results are significantly better. I'm happy. I grow happier and happier in many respects with the, the growth and development and evolution of, uh, of, a, of a gaming PC in a home theater living room environment. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to take a look at the settings, how it works, how I've got this stuff set up right now. All right, we'll go ahead and start with the TV settings here, first of all. Um, go ahead and enter the settings for the LG G2 OLED. Of course, I am in game mode, of course, so the game mode overlay comes up first, but we're going to jump into all settings. There we go. So we can see picture mode. We are in HDR select mode game optimizer uh, with some user settings. But the one that I really want to focus on, because we're talking here about brightness and HBR, we're going into brightness, is I do have dynamic tone mapping set to HGIG. When you're using, when you're using a PC, aside from game mode and this, there's one other setting that we want to make sure to set properly. I'm going to go ahead and go to home. I'm going to go to the home hub and I'm going to go up here to the three buttons in the upper right. Get that to open up. Edit inputs. And here we can see the where we command and control uh, elements of some of the devices that are plugged into our display. Now I have four devices plugged in, Apple TV, Nintendo Switch, a PC, and a Kaleidoscape. And I have them configured like they are. Apple TV is a set-top box, Nintendo uh, is a gaming uh, console icon, Kaleidoscape, fundamentally a Blu-ray type player, but PC is set to PC. And this is important for making sure that we have all of the options, the right options, settings, resolution, refresh rates, and, and so on, connecting between the source that is a PC and the LG television itself. There's a little bit more going on here than just designating a cool looking icon that matches uh, the device that's connected specifically on that HDMI input. So if you're doing this, make sure that your TV may have a specific PC mode setting that you want to set for the PC device that you're plugging into it. Go ahead and jump back here to the PC input. Next thing we'll look at is some of the basic resolution and refresh rate settings that I run here. Unfortunately, we still have to go into the NVIDIA control app. I can't wait till this thing goes away. I hope that NVIDIA really accelerates more development into the new NVIDIA app. We'll be looking at it specifically in a moment. Uh, but I think that new app is so superior. This thing is so old, <laughs> so dated, uh, but we just need the settings and options that are available in here to move to the other app and then the control panel can go away. But in any case, uh, under display change resolution, uh, I just want to show that I am scrolling further down here. I am going to the PC modes basically, uh, not just the ultra HD modes. That is what allows us to select 120 Hertz. So I'm running 3840 by 2160 resolution. I am running 120 hertz. This television is an HDMI 2.1 TV, capable of doing 4K 120, full bandwidth and all of that. And down here in the color settings, uh, I've got 32-bit color, 12-bit color depth. I am using RGB 
full as well. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos in the past, I've, I've often stuck to video levels, YCBCR, when it comes to this. Uh, however, I did make the change uh, in the interim as well over to RGB. The PC really is an RGB source. The LG television knows what to do with an RGB source. There's really no reason to have the PC outputting a different video level. It's actually just introducing extra conversions and extra conversions in our audio and video are usually something that we always want to try to avoid. Uh, so I have switched over to RGB. Quite honestly, I can't say that it made any tangible difference in image quality or something like that that I'm actually noticing or detecting, but ultimately it is, it is the right setting uh, to be using there. Next, we're gonna jump over to Windows. So in Windows settings itself, we're gonna go into display. And this is where our OS level HDR options are set. So the third option there says use HDR. It is turned on. Now that does mean that Windows uh, in the menus, uh, basically throughout the operating system outside of games is going to be in HDR mode. And as we've gone in and out of some stuff here, maybe you've seen HDR pop up the tag from the television in the upper right hand corner. Uh, that's all well and good. And I think there's no problem with doing this, basically just running the PC in HDR mode all the time. That way it's always turned on, it can be ready from an OS level to work in conjunction with RTX HDR and everything is good. So we're using HDR. Yeah, I have HDR video streaming turned on, although I never use this PC for streaming itself. But here's the main kicker. Auto HDR is now disabled. So we don't wanna be using auto HDR and RTX HDR at the same time. They would be competing to essentially do some of the same type of processing uh, and image manipulation uh, video processing at the same time. So you either want to use one or the other. And the whole crux of this video is the fact that RTX HDR is incredibly superior uh, to, to the auto. The one thing I wish they gave us an easy option for, I haven't found it, uh, is an ability to turn off the pop-up. When you launch a game that supports auto HDR, you do get a pop-up that says, hey, this game does this thing. Do you want to use it or not? Uh, I don't grab my keyboard or anything to dismiss it. You just wait a second and it will go away. But it'd be nice to be able to suppress that pop-up. Now, the other element, something that was added to Windows along the way, and this was showcased in some of my prior videos, is the HDR display calibration app. Now, you can get this from the Windows Store, and in conjunction with turning HDR on in Windows, I strongly suggest that you basically you want to run this thing, right? And actually, we'll go back to settings here for one second. Um, note that I am running uh, an HDR profile. If I go back here, system display, the color profile here is called HDR for LG G2. That's just what I named the, the calibration essentially that I put in there. And if, if you're familiar with uh, this from the gaming consoles, it's very much the same thing. We're gonna set some light levels, we're gonna set some black levels, uh, basically kind of giving the, the system an idea of the, the capabilities of the display when it comes to brightness and blackness. I'll just go ahead and run this through real quick, go ahead and get started. So we have an option here for uh, minimum luminance, which basically <laughs> on an OLED like this means we're going all the way black. We can go all the way to dark. And then on the maximums, do keep in mind that the number that's displayed on the slider corresponds essentially to nits. So if you know the capabilities of your display, specifically in terms of its brightness and all of that, you can kind of go right specifically to the number. I know, I know that my LG G2 runs HDR at a thousand nits, so I just go straightforward with setting that. And then same thing here goes all the way up to the 1000 level. Hit next again. Um, if you don't know those numbers, that's fine. Just do what it's telling you to do. Basically move the sliders until you uh, everything integrates uh, and you don't see the boxes. Um, I don't tend to mess with the color saturation slider. And then here we go. We can give a, a name to this profile uh, and it will be selectable in that color profile dropdown. Um, I'm not going to do that. Just hit restart to get us back to the beginning. I've already done this before. And again, HDR for LG G2 is what I named my prior calibration. Now this stuff is really starting to work in concert with each other. We've got HDR turned on in Windows. We've got Windows aware of the capabilities of our display. We've got the TV running in, in PC mode. We've got the TV set for HDIG. We've got resolution, refresh rate, all that stuff is set and ready to go. Let's look at the final piece now here. And this is the NVIDIA app, the new NVIDIA app. So again, I really like this. I think the design of this app is very contemporary, uh, very, very much up to date. It gives us a lot of the capabilities of what GeForce Now was doing, of course. And as we go forward again, hopefully we get more 
of what is available in the control panel brought in here. So it's a driver management app, but the thing that we're looking for very specifically is RTX HDR. So if we go down from home uh, over to this graphics option, uh, we can set a variety of program specific settings for the games that, that the NVIDIA app is identifying. Uh, that's fine, but what we're going to do here is actually look at global settings and we can see there's two options available in here that have not been available before anywhere else. Uh, we have RTX HDR, which is described as adding HDR support for non-HDR games using AI. It's a game filter that uses AI to add HDR support for DirectX and Vulkan games and you can manually adjust your preferences in the overlay. It really basically just has uh, two settings here, on or off, uh, off by default on if you want it and if you've got a setup for this kind of stuff man nowadays i strongly recommend doing it this way um, i have found this to just be absolutely so superior the other option here is rtx dynamic vibrance it says boost visual clarity for your games using ai rtx dynamic vibrance uses ai to improve visual clarity for your games dynamic vibrance is content adaptive prevents color crushing works on a per app basis now i've been using these two basically in concert with each other uh, to much success. Again, RTX Dynamic Vibrance doesn't have m more settings to it other than turn it on uh, or turn it off. I'm curious, uh, other folks that might have been spending more time with this, how do you feel about the combination of HDR and Dynamic Vibrance? Again, I've been running them both on since I turned my PC over from using Windows Auto HDR uh, to using the NVIDIA app, and I have not encountered anything, uh, any game, any imagery that was problematic to me such that I would feel a need to go turning dynamic vibrance off or, or testing one in isolation from the other. I think everything is looking fantastic with both of them on and that's the way uh, that I've essentially left it. As you can see, there are a variety of other settings coming in here. I wanna focus this video a little more specifically on the HDR discussion rather than uh, it being kind of a whole NVIDIA app uh, overview but if you are having trouble with HDR settings in a specific game, note that you can still tweak this on a per game basis. And here on a, on a game by game basis is where you're able to uh, do those specific settings. Now, by default, you can see here it's, it says use global peak brightness 1000. I think the best option essentially available to us here, unless you really are specifically trying to solve a specific problem that you've correctly identified in a game, is just to, to do the calibration, set the stuff in Windows, use the global settings, the default settings, turn the stuff on, and let NVIDIA uh, and the RTX capabilities basically just do their job. So just to pull up a couple games here and take a quick peek, I, I'm not recording or editing these videos in HDR, so some of the, the value benefit of this isn't going to necessarily come through. Uh, in the video entirely, but I have just been absolutely floored by the improvement that RTX HDR uh, has made. I feel like every game that we've played of late just launches <laughs> launches and looks uh, better, just flat out better than it did before. Batman here specifically would tend to crush a lot of things, and it's just such a clean, like clear and crisp image. Uh, I think you can really tell the HDR effects, the brights are so bright. Of course, with the OLED, the darks are so dark, everything is happening on the screen at the same time. Um, and an incredibly superior result, basically, uh, to what was, what was happening before RTX HDR was applied to this title. I understand I'm showing some old games here, but these are the things that we happen to be playing right now. Still working my way through Batman Arkham Knight. But my son and I are also working on Marvel Super Heroes 2. And so I do want to show, there we go. We had that flip notice kind of, the shut off of the screen, HDR in the upper right hand corner, and we have the use auto HDR pop up down there in the right. Of course, we're not using the windows. This is RTX HDR, but we started this game before switching the system over from Windows Auto HDR to RTX HDR. And I have to say, just like with everything else, uh, right, the theme of this video is how much better uh, I think the imagery actually is for an old, relatively older game a basic lego game at this point man this game just looks phenomenal i love pc gaming you just cannot compete with the level of fidelity and quality that you get out of a high-end gaming pc playing games at at maximum quality man it this th it just looks so good looks so good and high frame rates to boot so that's that basically a, a complete overview of my current settings setup between the pc the tv various applications uh, os and 
GPU settings and so on to get the most, what I think is absolutely the most, out of visual fidelity for home theater, living room, TV-based gaming using the gaming PC. I'm curious what folks think um, if you tried any of this stuff out. If you're not using the NVIDIA app yet, man, throw that GeForce experience off of your computer right away uh, and go get the NVIDIA app. Try out some of these new settings and capabilities. Now, granted, too, I haven't played any any super uh, of the newest, newest cutting-edge games on this. Um, I understand there's a little bit of a performance hit for RTX HDR, but in anything that I've played, I can't say that I even notice uh, anything. Um, there's more than enough headroom out of the 4090. And hey, in any regard, we're only probably a few months away from a 5090, and we're going to have all the all, all the performance headroom that we need, uh, even more so when the, then the new cards come and the 5000 series is out there. So again, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you've got your PC set up. Are you having some challenges? Is it working great? And what do you think about the new developments with regards to NVIDIA, the NVIDIA app in the PC gaming space? Sound off, let's discuss. Otherwise, if you liked the video and found it helpful, hey, please support the channel if you would. Uh, there's options down below. Become a channel member, leave a super thanks, PayPal Venmo tips. And if you're a PC gamer building your stuff, you're probably shopping at Newegg. You're probably shopping at Amazon. Uh, in some of those places, I have affiliate links to those stores down in the description as well. Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, leave a comment, and come on back for more home theater, home theater gaming discussion and fun.